Hi, I'm Shania Williams with the South Carolina Energy Office, and I am here with Michael Drennan. I am the Director of Development for the Montessori School of Columbia. Thank you so much for being here. We're very excited to talk to you about the mini grant your school received from the Energy Office. Tell me more about the project that you all did with the grant funds. Well, we're sitting in front of a building that we built thanks to the generous support of a family here at the Montessori School. And it was important that we practice our, put into practice what our teaching is with our students. Um, and so we wanted to make this a net zero energy building. And so we did all the things you're supposed to do to make it a tight building, to do the installation, uh, but that's not far enough to get it to a net energy, net zero energy uh, program. So we uh, wanted to install some solar panels on the roof of the building that the building itself would generate all the energy that it would need for the year. And um, getting the mini grant from the uh, office was critical in helping bring that to fruition. Oh, that's great. Tell me more about the Net Zero building and how it has affected your operations and just the, the building's functioning overall. Right. So I think the main purpose for us, the main motivation to do a Net Zero Energy building was to be a responsible member of our community. And we're teaching the future leaders of tomorrow. And we want them to have direct tangible experience with a net zero energy building so they know what's possible and hopefully where we're heading as a society going forward. So the idea behind the net zero energy building is that it is well insulated, well designed, has lots of natural light in it so that we're using less uh, electricity during the day uh, and that the solar panels on the roof are generating all the power that you need to heat cool light the building for the entire year. So that was an important uh, goal for us. And of course there's additional costs involved in building in that manner, but those costs are more than recouped through the energy savings that we realize in terms of the less heating and cooling and lighting that we need to do throughout the year. And every time we're a small independent school like this that you can to reduce your ongoing costs, like utility costs, just means that's more money that you can put into enriching the education of students at the school. Yes, exactly. So have the students been involved very much in any of the energy projects? Have there been lessons that have circled around energy savings? Um, have they been involved in all, at all in any way? Yes, um, we want this building to be an edu not only an educational building in the sense that education occurs inside of it, but an educational building in the sense that students are learning from the functioning of the building. So we have, for example, the capability to go online to our in-phase portal and see exactly how much energy the panels are generating uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so that enables our students to do projects like what is the difference in the energy generation from season to season? How does the energy generation of a solar panel change based on the temperature outside or the cloudiness uh, level? And how is that comparing to the energy that we're using in this particular building for heating and cooling? Like how much of our energy goes to cool or heat the building? How much of it goes to lighting? So it can give uh, students a, kind of a very applied way of learning about energy efficiency, individual responsibility, potential programs and uh, projects that can be done in the future. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's very important to have these hands-on practical application yeah. learning experiences for students yeah. because they see what the information is, is doing to impact their community. They can see overall um, how their actions, how the actions of the community members around them can really impact the environment. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And part of the Montessori education is it's very hands-on, very tactile, particularly for the younger ages. Uh, we believe that students learn by doing and by interacting um, with uh, not only materials in the classroom, but the buildings in which they're at and the community at large. So this is very uh, fitting for our method of education. Yes, I can yeah. see that, definitely. So how long did it take you to complete the building and all of the projects on it? 
Um, well, you know, once we were able to secure funding for the building, I think the building took about eight months to construct. Okay. Um, and then I think about uh, less than a year later, we added the uh, solar panels thanks to the grant from the energy office. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, we're so happy that we could help make this happen. <laughs> oh, and another one of the great things is that we had a parent um, uh, who's an architect and she was able to do the design for the building for us. So. Wow, so what a great. great way to actually have the community come yeah. in and make this a big project. And we would love to engage the community in other ways in regard to this building. So, uh, for example, during the pandemic, we opened up this building to serve as a vaccination site for people in the community. And uh, I would love to, I know from time to time people do tours of solar building, net zero energy building, and we would love to be included in that so that not only is it benefiting our students, but it's benefiting and educating the wider community as well. Yes, that's yeah. also important. So is the campus or the building ever open to the public? Uh, we can make special arrangements and accommodations to do tours. I'd love to do that at any time. We'll just work around the schedule of the, of the students in the classroom. But yes, yeah, so I would love for this to continue to be a source, a resource for the community. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, so do you have any future energy projects for the school that you're planning? Well, our school is about to embark on a strategic planning process where we're going to be looking at things like that that we can do on campus. And I would love to be doing more uh, energy retrofits on our existing buildings. We have a number of buildings uh, around campus. I'd love to be installing more solar panels on campus. Uh, I would love to install uh, an electric car charging uh, infrastructure on campus. We have some of our teachers who drive electric cars and I'd like to offer that to them. Uh, one thing that's mm, very pressing for us is that as our school has grown, we've outgrown uh, the capacity of our existing diesel school activity bus. I would love to replace that with an electric school bus, uh, but as you may well be aware, the capital cost sometimes, the initial upfront cost for projects like a battery powered bus or a net zero building or higher. And that's where grant funding can really help us bridge the gap and make sure that we don't buy another diesel bus, but we buy an energy efficient, non-polluting, good for your health and for the children's health electric school bus. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful interview and I look forward to seeing all the future projects your school has. Great, thank you so much, Janelle. And I um, am so grateful for the Energy Office, all the work that you guys do, and for these mini grants which made this project possible for us. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>